Do you have some handrails in your house that look old, worn, and ugly? Or perhaps they're just not to your taste? Do they bother you every time that you see them? And now are you wondering how do the professionals make them look so good? Well, I'm gonna give you our secret sauce so that you can make your handrails look amazeballs. In this video, you're gonna learn how to transform any handrail into a solid color, whether it's starting as raw wood, stained, or painted. I'm going to go over our simple prep method and I'll also be revealing our top secret product that we discovered relatively recently that makes this process way easier than it used to be. And finally, I'll be going over our super duper secret handrail paint and how to apply it. Before we get into that, I wanted to mention that this is not the initial video I set out to make. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to prep out for uh, the staining process uh, for raw, raw wood. Nope. No, I'm not. Funny story, originally when I was hired to do this job, we were going to be doing the whole staircase, and I was going to be staining the treads, handrails, newel posts, and spindles, all that stuff, uh, the same stain to match the floor. And the treads and the risers were new, so that wasn't a problem. New video coming out on that one shortly. However, the handrails and newel posts were the original 1990s builder grade wood. Instead of replacing them, the homeowner decided to chemically strip them, which is a super unpleasant process if you've never tried it. Anyway, when I went to apply the stain, um, I could pretty much tell as soon as I applied it and then ragged it off that it didn't really take the stain how I wanted it to. It actually oranged the stain quite a bit, um, and that can be from the chemical stripper and a couple other things. Anyway, it didn't look great. And uh, I quickly pivoted. I knew the homeowners weren't really going to be digging it, so I proposed an alternative solution, which is the process we'll be going over in this video. There are three types of handrails that you will likely be encountering. Raw wood, stain and polyurethane wood, or painted wood. Uh, so that's kind of your starting point that you may be dealing with. If I were making this video a year ago, then I would have a different set of products for each of those situations. But it was before we discover the product that I'm going to be going over in this video. Before I get to that product, we've got to prep the surface a little bit before we start uh, applying anything else. So you want to use either 150 or 220 grit sandpaper and just give it a good sand. Try and sand with the grain. Uh, as best you can and particularly if you are sanding polyurethane you want to make sure you're getting you're sanding it quite thoroughly and then once you're done sanding you can wipe that off with a rag and we're ready for the next step so now the surface has been prepped and wiped down we are ready to apply a primer to that surface which will allow the top coats of our finished paint to adhere and that's the tricky and kind of hard part of this process or at least it used to be. Um, a lot of times with these surfaces, we'd have to use bin shellac or cover stain, which is an oil-based primer. Those products are really aggressive to work with. They're also quite expensive. You need a respirator. It's just not a fun time. Uh, this product right here is Fresh Start from Benjamin Moore. It is 100% acrylic primer, and it is wonderful to work with. It doesn't have the aggressive fumes of any oil-based product like uh, cover stain or Ben shellac. Uh, it actually smells a little bit like lemons, which is nice. But this product adheres exceptionally well, uh, particularly to sanded polyurethane, which is uh, just surprising. And uh, it also does a really nice job of shifting over lighter colors to darker colors. In the B-roll you're watching, I'm going to be, I converted the handrails from uh, their stained color over to black. Uh, so we went with the dark gray version of this primer, which does an excellent job. When you're applying this product, you want to go with the grain. Uh, if you can, pick smaller sections to do so you can complete them all at once, like spindles or a newel post or like a complete rail, things like that. Uh, then just kind of go with the grain where it makes sense. Um, and then you want to give it about an hour-ish to dry. Before you move on to applying uh, the top coats of the finish paint, you want to go ahead and sand the surfaces that you primed. A lot of times when you apply a primer, particularly to raw wood, it's going to raise that grain a little bit. You want to just want to take 220 grit sandpaper and sand that down uh, so it's fairly smooth to the touch. Uh, that'll just give our finish paint the best chance to be the smoothest as it can be. So an excellent combo that we have discovered is using the Fresh Start Primer that we talked about before with Benjamin Moore's Advance uh, Trim Paint and Semi-Gloss. That combination will get you amazing results if you lay it down correctly. There's a little bit of a trick to get the most out of the Advance product, but I'll get to that in a minute. Advance is an excellent choice for handrails for a variety of reasons. It's a hybrid trim paint, which means it's got oil resins pumped into it, so it's going to perform quite a bit differently than, uh, say, a 100% acrylic paint. Because it's a hybrid, it's going to level out really nicely. It's also going to have an excellent amount of adhesion and durability, particularly once it cures out. 
when I use Advance, I like using soft bristled brushes like the Corona Vegas. This is an excellent choice. It's got champagne nylon. There's a lot of other companies that make soft bristled brushes as well that do well with this paint. Um, it just tends to lay it down really smooth and it gives that uh, product a good chance to level out. Just like you did with the primer, you want to lay it down uh, with the grain and try and do it in sections. Uh, just be aware that Advance, because of it has a really long open time, which means it's going to stay wet for a long time. It's, it is prone to drips, uh, particularly if you have the handrail tilted down. It's going to drip kind of where that handrail meets the newel post. That's really common, so just be aware of that. Um, it's a little bit more finicky uh, than some uh, you know acrylic or latex-based trim paints. The trick I alluded to earlier about how to get the most out of this product is to allow enough dry time between coats. On the can, it says to allow 16 hours uh, between coats. Generally, you can move that along a little bit depending on drying conditions and whether or not you're running fans and things like that. But if you have the time, it's nice to just do one coat one day and then do another coat the next day. And it's also a good idea to sand down that handrail uh, with like 220 in between coats. Just run your hand up and down the handrail, you know, where you would typically be uh, using it and then see if any burrs are catching your fingers and things like that. And just sand that down before you apply a second coat. With this handrail, we did two coats and I think a little bit of a touch-up coat. Um, and it's it worked out really nicely and the handrail turned out wonderfully. So now that you know the secrets of transforming your handrails, don't wreck your paint job by making the mistakes that almost everybody makes. Check that video out right now. Bye now.